Hey guys, it's Will with Terrible Infant. Welcome to my seven favorite DVD and Blu-ray box sets. So this is just from my collection. This is not me culling from every Blu-ray and DVD box set that has ever been released. And obviously, since this is my seven favorites, it's very subjective. It's really just about my taste in movies. But we've been doing some, um, like, physical media videos recently that people have responded really positively to, like Blu-ray reviews, showing off DVDs and stuff like that. So I thought this would be a fun thing to do. So I have a big bag of uh, DVD and Blu-ray box sets right here, and I'm just going to dig right into it. So what do we have at number seven? Let's do this one. I have a very loose order worked out in my head, but I'm still kind of slightly making this up as I go along. This is the Criterion Collection Eclipse series number 38, Masaki Kobayashi Against the System. So Masaki Kobayashi is probably most well known for doing um, either Harakiri, uh, Harakiri with Tatsuya Nakadai, or um, he also did Kwaidon, which is the big, uh, it's like an anthology uh, kind of like ghost story horror film. Those are also Criterion releases. But um, this is a, a set of four of his early films. And I'm just looking at what years they released. So the, three of them are from 1956, which is kind of insane. Um, the Japanese studio system was insane, if you don't know anything about that. But because um, Kurosawa made, what, like 17 movies in 15 years at one point in his career? Um, and then uh, 1962. So there's four movies in here. Uh, the Thick Walled Room, I Will Buy You, Black River, and The Inheritance. And uh, Black River is like this really dark comedy um, slash crime film about um, the... Uh, the uh, bootleg markets that arose around like mi American military bases after the war in Japan. Um, that's a really good movie. Uh, I Will Buy You is about um, like moral corruption in Japanese baseball. Uh, the Thick Walled Room is about um, Japanese soldiers who are imprisoned for war crimes, but they're all low-ranking soldiers. So it's this very scathing, almost like documentary style um, look at the fact that the people who led Japan into the war and committed the most heinous war crimes were like the politicians in Japan. And you know, the people who were the grunts are the, basically the ones who are paying the price for it. Um, and then The Inheritance, which is like a very dark, kind of like comedic, almost like Ealing Studios type movie. Um, I'll just read you the description here. A family of feeble moral fiber and one resourceful secretary fight over the money of a dying patriarch. And then if you've never seen an Eclipse series box set before, it's just, it's four like slim case um, DVDs and they each have uh, artwork on them and like credits on the back and stuff like that. And then there the DVDs are not particularly ornamental, but there's like little kind of essays in each one. And I, I came really close to doing post-war Kurosawa, the Eclipse series, instead of the Masaki Kobayashi one, because that has um, No Regrets for Our Youth, One Wonderful Sunday, and Scandal in it, which are all movies I really, really like. Um, Scandal especially, I think, is a really tremendously underrated Kurosawa film. That It's almost like a Frank Capra film. It's like very sentimental. It takes place over like Christmas and New Year's, I think. And um, it's a really, really good and criminally overlooked film. And then also The Idiot is in there, which is Kurosawa's Dostoevsky adaptation. And then um, uh, Wake Mono no Ikiru, which is uh, alternately translated as I Live in Fear and Record of a Living Being, um, which is about uh, Toshiro Mifune plays a character who's like terrified of the atomic bomb, basically, and like doesn't want to go outside. And every time he hears an airplane, thinks it's like a U.S. bomber coming to bomb them. So, um, But I picked Masaki Kobayashi instead because I think it's just a little bit more interesting to me because he's less of a well-known filmmaker. So at number six, what do we have? Let me go back into my grab bag of tricks. This is an interesting choice because it's not fancy at all. It is 20 films of Alfred Hitchcock. I got this for $5 at Target. And it's four DVDs in paper cases that come tumbling out when you open it, right? So it's like, what is this thing? Like, who made it? But, I mean, obviously anyone who loves cinema, studies cinema, or is just a fan of cinema knows that Alfred Hitchcock is like one of the great visual masters of the medium. Okay, and The Lady Vanishes is on here, The 39 Steps, Jamaica Inn, um... God, what else is on here? Sabotage, uh, The Farmer's Wife, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Like, I mean, there are at least three, like, straight-up classic films in here, and then a bunch of other really overlooked and underrated and really great early examples of what Hitchcock was doing, like films that he made in Britain and stuff like that in the 30s. Um, they go back as early as the 20s, I believe. There's a couple silent films on here. Uh, and this is just, I mean, I like, really, this. I think this was $5. Uh, it was either 5 or 10 bucks, and... It's just ridiculous how many great films are on here for basically no money. So what do we have at number five? Ba -ba -da -ba. I'm doing the Superman music again, which I like to do in my lists. Uh, this is Alejandro Jodorowsky set from Abco. Um, it has uh, his uh, El Topo 
and uh, The Holy Mountain, which are the films that he's most well known for. He's he's also actually pretty well known for uh, not directing Dune, basically, right? Like he was hired to direct Dune, and there was all this pre-production stuff done. And I had, I didn't see the documentary about it. There's a documentary called Yodorovsky's Dune that that was like a really well received film, maybe like ten, five, ten years ago. Um, but uh, he's I mean he still makes movies, so he's still around. And uh, but The Holy Mountain and El Topo are like these landmarks of like crazy psychedelic, um, like six late sixties, early seventies cinema. And uh, uh, El Topo was, like, much loved by, like, George Harrison and John Lennon, I think, is the story. And their adoration for it helped him get money for The Holy Mountain. And The Holy Mountain is just such a mind-blowing and insane film. Um, it's one of, like, the, I think one of, like, the best cult movies you'll ever see. And it's just completely insane. Um, and so, but this is a really cool set because it has uh, the music. Because these films are, aren't well known for their music, too. So here's El Topo. Here's The Holy Mountain. Um, here's Fondo Elise, which I think this is a, um, a short film. No, oh, no, this is 96 minutes. This is a feature. It's been a long, long time since I watched this movie. Uh, and then, uh, La Cravate, which is, I think this is based on a short, like a famous short story. Uh, but I don't remember if it's Kafka or somebody like that. Um, and then you have the soundtrack, soundtrack to El Topo and the soundtrack to The Holy Mountain. So you get a lot of bang for your buck here. And Arrow is actually releasing a Blu-ray box set of Yodorovsky films in 2020. They announced that pretty recently. So I'm very excited about that. I think that's Great Britain only, so it'll be Region B. Um, but so there you go. There's number five. I'm going to speak right up to the microphone. Number four on my list of my seven favorite Blu-ray and DVD box sets. And these, the next four are ones that I really, really love. So it's hard for me to pick the order, but let's go for this one. Universal Classic Monsters, the essential collection. I absolutely love the Universal Monster films. Um, going all the way back to my childhood, I watched them as a kid, like on VHS and stuff. We would rent them and watch them with my dad. Uh, we owned Frankenstein. I'm almost positive we owned uh, maybe The Mummy. Uh, we had The Beast with Five Fingers, actually, which I don't even know if that is the Universal Monster film, but the Peter Lorre movie. But um, So this was a Father's Day present to me on my first Father's Day for my son, who was only, whatever, a month old at the time, so obviously I think my wife picked it out. But um, the films in here are Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, Dracula, The Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, The Mummy, and The Phantom of the Opera. Um, the Phantom of the Opera being the version with Claude Rains. So, uh, I mean, just classic, classic movies. Dracula, I love that. Like, that movie scared the crap out of me as a kid. Uh, my parents still talk about it. And then we have uh, Frankenstein here. And you can see, like, there's the original posters in here. Uh, Boris Karloff, it's the mummy, the invisible man. Um, which, uh, Claude Rains is in that, too, right? Yeah, he's hilarious in that movie. That movie is a lot funnier than I remembered it. As a kid, I remember it being this kind of, like, spooky sci-fi gothic you know kind of like monster horror movie but i rewatched it it's like actually really funny um the bride of frankenstein which is one of the best movies ever made uh and then you have the wolf man of course with claude rains and then um the fa oh no claude rains is in the phantom of the opera right and who who is in uh the invisible man it's also claude rains yeah okay okay <laughs> there you go uh, and uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Sorry, I'm just confusing myself a little bit here. But um, I just, I mean, if you love these movies, this is an awesome set because they're all presented on Blu-ray, so it's a great presentation. There's a lot of really great bonus features on there. Before we get into the top three, I just want to show you something I got for Christmas because I haven't watched it yet, so I couldn't include it on my list in any good faith because I can't really tell you what I think about it. But hey, my parents got me this, so I have to give a big shout-out. I'm really, really excited to dig into this. Um... The Criterion Showa Films, 1954 to 1975, Criterion Collection, uh, Godzilla box set. Um, this is spine number 1000 for the Criterion Collection, so this was like a big deal for them. As you can see, it's like a big book, and it has like artwork and notes about the films in it, and then all the films are on like a big, kind of like a page with little um, spots for all the Blu-rays. But this has uh, Godzilla, Godzilla rides, Raids Again, King Kong vs. Godzilla, Mothra vs. Godzilla, um, Ghidorah, Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, Invasion of Astro Monsters, Ebira, Horror of the Sea, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, All Monsters Attack, Godzilla vs. Hedorah, Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and Terror of Mechagodzilla. Hell yeah. So again, it, it, it's still sealed. 
I can't lie to you and say that this is my favorite Blu-ray box set, but I think if I were to do this movie again in a year, that would be in the top three. So now we're in the top three, and it's really, really hard for me to pick which order I want to put these in because I love them all so, so much. So what do we have next? Apocalypse Now. I almost put this at number two. The only reason I didn't is it's it doesn't have as many movies as the one that I put at number two, so it's really just a, which one am I going to watch more? Um, but in terms of like single film presentations uh, on Blu-ray, this is absolutely the best 25 bucks I've ever spent in my life. There's like nine hours of bonus material on here. There's an incredible Francis Ford Coppola commentary track to the movie. He interviews John Milius in one feature that's that's pretty long because John Milius wrote the script and then Coppola rewrote it extensively. Um, there's this really amazing feature about how they did the music to it. They cover all the aspects of production and post-production and pre-production. Like it's really, like it's the best deep dive into a single film I have ever seen. Um, and this was put up by Lionsgate. And there is now the 4K and Blu-ray, I think it's six disc version of Apocalypse Now, which has the final cut, the redux, the original theatrical, and Hearts of Darkness in it. All these bonus features and an additional hour-long Q, Q&A conversation, whatever you want to call it, between Soderbergh, Steven Soderbergh, and Francis Ford Coppola um, at the world, I think it was the world premiere uh, of the final cut of um, Apocalypse Now. So uh, this has the Redux, the original theatrical, and Hearts of Darkness, which is why I included it on here as a box set, because it does have three, I mean, it has two distinct cuts of the same film, plus a third film, which is the documentary, Hearts of Darkness. Um, but I mean, you know, this is just really awesome packaging. Uh, and this is, I have to say, this is one of my absolute favorite movies ever, too. So to have this kind of presentation, this kind of depth given to a movie I love this much is just really incredible. And here's, like, this booklet that has, like, photocopy pages from the original script. And then it has Coppola's, like, handwritten notes all over it for, like, what he wanted to shoot here and how he wanted to expand the script there. And, um, like, you know, this is, like, the, I think this is the... Uh, a scan of the copy of, of the book, Heart of Darkness, that Coppola had with him on the set. Yeah, see, so here's some of the pages with his, like, underlines as to, like, what he wanted to focus on in the film. And, like, I mean, this booklet is incredible, and the presentation of the film is incredible. And uh, I think if you're a fan of Apocalypse Now or you're a fan of the process of filmmaking and stuff, the 4K one, which has standard Blu-ray versions and the 4K version, is, like, 25 bucks. I think. I was at Best Buy a couple days ago. Um, you, it, you can't spend better money than that on a film if you're a cinephile. So I only have two left. What do I have at number two? Tarantino. I'm a really big Quentin Tarantino fan, uh, as you may know if you watch this channel. This is Tarantino 20. So I think this was released in 2012, right? Because Reservoir Dogs came out in 1992. Um, and this is all new Mondo artwork. And I have to say, here's a fun little story for you about me. I went to the 20th anniversary screening of Reservoir Dogs at the New Beverly, which is the movie theater that Quentin Tarantino owns. And they were selling Mondo posters for Reservoir Dogs that were only available at that screening, as best I understood it. And they were 60 bucks. And at that time, I didn't really know what Mondo was. I'm not like much of a collector of... Uh, those types of things, like posters and um, the other kind of like non, like I collect movies. I don't really collect like the ephemera beyond that, I guess. Um, and I was like, oh, it's a really cool poster, but 60 bucks is a little steep. I didn't go for it. And there, the last time I checked, which by the way was like three years ago, they were like $700 online. And I'm like, oh, you moron. Anyway, so this has all of Tarantino's films up until 2012. So Django Unchained is not in here. But you have, and it actually, it includes the films that he wrote. Um, well, it includes uh, True Romance. Um, Natural Born Killers is not in here. But, um, you know, True Romance is a film that he wrote but that he didn't direct. So you have Reservoir Dogs, True Romance, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown. And then over here, you have uh, Kill Bills, Part 1 and 2. And then you have um, Death Proof and Glorious Bastards. And then you have two discs of bonus material, which is really, I mean, having these incredible films and this great packaging um, on Blu-ray and everything is really awesome, but the bonus material is really incredible. There's a documentary on there that's basically feature length that goes over his entire career and it's interviews with like Robert Rodriguez, Tim Roth, like all these people who know Tarantino like really, really well. And so like, you know, I mean, if you live in L.A., you probably know the street Crescent Heights, right? So Robert Rodriguez talks about how, like, even after Pulp Fiction came out and Tarantino was, like, you know, making a lot of money, he was still living in his apartment on Crescent Heights, and he had a film 
projector and he would project films onto his wall on like a I'm sorry, like a bed sheet or something. So like Robert Rodriguez used to go over to Tarantino's apartment and they would like watch movies and like drink and whatever, just like hang out. So it's a lot you, you get to learn like a lot about the day to day life of being like a filmmaker and in that period in time, especially in the nineties with the indie film boom and like the Sundance thing and everything like that. So number two on my list of my seven favorite D V D and Blu ray box sets is that Tarantino at twenty. What do we have at number one? You might know if you know me personally, or if you know my taste in films, or if you've heard me talk about this stuff before. Let me just bust it out here. It's very heavy, and it's capsizing the bag that I have all of these in, so I'm having to rearrange some things while I take it out. It is the Criterion Collection, Zatoichi, the Blind Swordsman box set. There are 25 movies in here. So I love Japanese cinema. Uh... I really like Chambara, which is like swordplay films, which we kind of colloquially refer to as samurai films in the West. And um, that's who each... I really love goofy humor and satire and parody and stuff like that as well. And that's who each, if you're unfamiliar, is basically like an entire series that is making fun of like really serious samurai movies. And so the setup is you have... Zat, the character of Zatoichi is a blind guy who wanders from town to town. He's a masseuse offering people massages. He also happens to be the world's best swordsman, and he keeps a sword inside of his cane. So he just pulls it out and attacks people, right? Um, and these movies are just like, they're so good. They're so good. And they were made in a really short period of time. Um, and uh, so this comes with a hardcover book that has information about each film. And then also, so if you've seen this, this is like a sticker that came on the plastic wrap. Um, but like on the Criterion website, you might see this listed as like the cover. Um, so maybe you'll be familiar with that. But these films came out in like a really, really short amount of time. And like there are some great filmmakers who worked on these. Like there's one where it's um, Zatoichi meets Yojimbo. Yojimbo is the character that Toshiro Mifune plays in Yojimbo and Sanjuro, the Kurosawa films. And that film was directed by Kihachi Okamoto, who I think he's Sword of Doom, Samurai Assassin. He did a movie called Kill. That's like a – it's actually kind of similar to the Zatoichi films. Um it's like a, a like a kind of dark uh, comedy uh, samurai film. So the last film in this set came out in 1973. And the first film in this set came out in, wait for it, 1962. So in 11 years, they made 25 movies. And um, this is the dual format first uh, printing of this. It's now, I think, only on Blu-ray, or maybe there's a Blu-ray and a DVD edition. But so this has all of the movies on both Blu-ray and DVD. And I got this with a gift certificate and when it was on, like, a really, really big sale. So it was reduced from, like, $260 to $125, and I had a $100 gift certificate. So I paid a dollar per movie, basically, my own money, 25 bucks for this. Um... And it's just like, as a fan of Japanese cinema, as a fan of like, you know, satire, parody, silly comedy, um, you know, the history of cinema and uh, all of these things. And I'm a big fan of Criterion Collection too. I just love this to death and I have gotten so much enjoyment out of it. I can't even tell you. It's definitely the best 25 bucks of my own money I ever spent on a Blu-ray box set. So that is the Zatoichi Blind Swordsman Collection from Criterion Collection. My name is Will. You have been watching my seven favorite DVD and Blu-ray box sets from my personal collection. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>